We traveled upstate to Bull Sluice, a well-known rapid to paddlers on the Chattooga River, and met with two representatives of Confluence Water Sports, one of the largest paddle sports manufacturers in the country. So this is, uh, this is commonly called uh, the, the Section 4, the beginning of Section 4 on the Chattooga River. And uh, this rapid behind us is actually Bull Sluice Rapid. Um, it's a class four, or class five, depending on the water level. And uh, today it's running about 1.3 feet. So it's a little lower than normal, but uh, it's still a lot of fun, no doubt. The beautiful thing about South Carolina, I and mean, one of the many beautiful things about South Carolina is the fact that we have such a diverse amount of water, types of water rather, that you can paddle. Um, we're really fortunate in that sense because we're not landlocked. Um, we have the coastal area where you can get out um, onto the ocean, on the sea, and paddle some, uh, which is beautiful if you just want to explore some of the islands out there and you know really get a sense of you know what's beyond our you know our our, our line, our border out there. Um, if you want to get into some of the, the, the backwater sections of, of the low state and really kind of discover the. Um, the darker waters and, and some of the just the, the brackish waters. There's you know, there's kayaks that are designed to still help you be nimble, still help help you feel stable, and let you explore that. Uh, and then let's not forget our lakes. I mean, we have some of the most beautiful lakes in this region, um, in the upstate and in the uh, the middle part of the state that uh, are just miles and miles wide and deep and beautiful. place that enables you to go whitewater rafting one day, go onto the lake, you know, the next day to do a little bit of flat water paddling, hiking up in the mountains the following day and, you know, have a nice dinner in a cosmopolitan city like Greenville. I mean, I just love it. That's, yeah, I understand that's your first time, but it sure didn't look like it. Yeah, it was uh, great. Tell us a little bit how you got into this sport. Well, actually, I was just uh, mostly into recreational and touring kayaking, uh, just borrowing other people's boats until I got the job at Confluence. So once I got in the company, I was just dying to get out on the white water, try some of the sea kayaking even further out, and learn more about the sport. Being a water baby in other uh, areas. I was a product manager coming straight out of school, stayed in product management, marketing, and it was a dream job for me to go from consumer packaged goods to step into something that you just get excited about going, you get excited going to work every day. I mean, it's just wonderful. A lot of people probably don't realize that a lot of these accessories are coming from South Carolina and uh, some of and these boats here are being made. Mm -hmm. And I understand Conf yeah, and yeah. paddles too. Yeah. So this has created a whole lot of different jobs. Absolutely. I mean, not. We're always looking for new products to come out that would enhance the whole paddling experience. Uh, both evolutionary, you know, just an upgrade to a PFD or, or a paddle, to coming up with something entirely different, like a transportation system that enables you to get your kayak e more easily from the car to the water. Whitewater boats specifically, both uh, the kayaks used to be you know, much longer. I mean, you're talking 11, 13 feet. Uh, today, we've got boats that are you know, quite a bit shorter, up to you know, six feet, uh, a little longer. And then we have some boats that are you know, back up into that range. So the difference is now uh, there's more of uh, niche paddling. So you can have boats that really um, are designed to paddle whatever type of whitewater you want to paddle. If you want to uh, play boat, do freestyle moves, um, there's kayaks that are specifically designed to be short and nimble and quick. Uh, if you want a kayak to run big drops, <laughs> yeah. then uh, there's kayaks that have more volume around where the paddler is and more rocker on the ends to help you resurface faster. Basically, Scott is a paddler by nature. He, he grew up being a paddler and he turned his passion of paddling into a career. John, on the other hand, is a business person, a uh, classically trained business person who has turned her business acumen into a passion for paddling. So. The wonderful thing about Confluence is we have both of those kinds of people uh, that make up our organization. It's, as I said, it's indicative of the entire outdoor industry where entrepreneurs and people with passion about their particular activity 
turn it into a career or turn it into an organization or a company. Since 2005, the outdoor industry itself has grown 5% a year, and we have had about 3% job growth every year. Confluence has prospered during the economic crisis over the last several years. We actually have grown. Um, we've increased our market share and uh, obviously added financial stability to the organization. But the industry itself is, is a very robust, sustainable industry. Outdoor enthusiasts, people who engage in the out outdoor activities continue to buy products, goods and services because it's the kind of lifestyle they like to celebrate. It's the kind of lifestyle they like to participate in. Goods, services, trips and travel. 99.6% of our products, our boat products, are manufactured right here in Greenville, South Carolina. And we've been located in the upstate for 30 plus years. We, as a company within this broader industry, spend five, over $5 million in the state of South Carolina on goods and services to support our organization. We expend another, we generate another million dollars, over a million dollars in revenue by the goods and services we sell to companies in South Carolina that turn into consumer purchases. And you're shipping out to how many different countries? We ship around the world, probably 50 countries. Wow, and to see not only these kayaks that you're producing, but you're also producing many different accessories. We are. So all of the safety gear, paddle accessories, PFDs, uh, everything that one needs to go out and kayak, from the beginning kayaker all the way to the expert. So we cover the, the entire gamut of, of the consumer, uh, from low price point to high. We also cover every feature and function, from a recreational kayaker to a sea kayaker. And we tap and touch literally every retail channel of distribution. And you've seen growth in interesting parts of the kayak industry, like kayak fishing. Kayak fishing itself, fishing itself actually, uh, has 46 million participants on an annual basis. And over the course of the last 12 months, saw a tremendous growth uh, in a very important segment, which is females and youth between 6 and 12 years old. So that's uh, an indication of future opportunities to come. Still making handmade boats? So we are, you know, we, we do a lot of production, obviously, in the rota molded uh, methodology, but this is a perfect example of hand craftsmanship that is still uh, something that we sell today. This is actually called infusion molding, and this is a 16-foot carbon Kevlar canoe. Um, it takes about 30 hours of labor and tremendous amount of training and institutional knowledge to perform this uh, manufacturing process. We're a very comprehensive start to finish organization. We build every product we have from scratch, meaning we come up with concepts, turn it into finished product and ship it out the door uh, around the world. So we have designers, we have engineers, we have a marketing team that does everything from marketing communications to design work to um, advertising uh, work. We have a, a sales organization that uh, is, is spread out around the country representing the different territories and areas. Um, obviously we have a finance and accounting group that is a, a very professional, classically trained finance and accounting group. Um, and we certainly have a very robust manufacturing organization, uh, everything from high-level senior quality people to manufacturing technicians to process technicians uh, to production workers. So it's really end-to-end. -end, uh, plastic resin comes in and we output a boat uh, covering all the bases. So these are new models that we'll be releasing this August for our, uh, our trade show, the Outdoor Retailer Show in Salt Lake City. And this is the room where we, we essentially will, will pull this plug into its final shape. We'll add certain characteristics to show us where that uh, um, mounting walls may be mounted, where logos may be attributed to the boat, where hatches may be fixed onto the kayak, um, and then we'll make the notations on the, on the mold that tells the foundry exactly what type of finish, um, where to sandblast, uh, where to uh, you know, leave pockets for, you know, things for, for fittings, deck fixtures. The assembly line is broken up into different workstations. Uh, it's all divided up into a balanced workload so that the part runs down that assembly line at a balanced pace so there's no bottlenecks. Each station has its own set of parts and pieces that it installs onto the boat and uh, so that it tacks at the same rate down the assembly line. The car industry, which we read about every day, is 340 
billion dollars. The pharmaceutical industry is 330 billion dollars and the outdoor industry is almost twice the size. The industry employs 6.1 million people. Those are direct jobs. Um, and as a comparison there, the oil and gas industry employs 2.1 million people. I think what South Carolina policymakers really need to recognize uh, is the benefits that outdoor recreation has to the state. In addition to driving revenue and certainly tax dollars, it drives locals uh, to recreate, it drives tourism, it enhances and increases the quality of life for everybody around uh, where the recreation infrastructure is built. It helps us retain high quality workforce and it also uh, sets a standard for protecting our natural resources.